Hello friends, how are you? My name is Rizwan Afiz and uh, we were talking about ulcer. So uh, in this video we will talk about uh, NSAID induced gastric ulcer. NSAID is basically a class of drug, uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. They are basically anti-inflammatory drugs which include uh, aspirin, which include ibuprofen, which include uh, diclofenac, which include salicoxib. So all these drugs may cause, may induce ulcer. Okay, and in today's video, we will focus on the pathophysiology of uh, ulcer induced by these drugs. Okay, so before understanding the pathophysiology, first of all, let me explain what are prostaglandin, how they are formed, and what is their role. Okay, and then we will talk about different types of enzymes, and then we will talk about the role of NSAID. Okay, first of all, before, uh, let me tell you, prostaglandins are basically membrane-derived mediators. And they are formed throughout the body. They are formed in the uh, uh, GI mucosa. They are formed in the renal tubules. They are formed in the inflammatory cells. They are formed in the macrophage. They are formed in the platelets. And every uh, in every cells, they have different roles. Okay. Similarly, as I have explained, that these prostaglandins are also formed in the GIT. How they are formed? I will explain this in the later part of the video. First of all, let's talk about the mechanism. What they do in the GIT? These are basically protective prost uh, prostaglandins. How they are formed, sorry, uh, what they do and how they protect uh, gastric epithelial cells from the harmful effect of acid. In the previous video, uh, in which I talked about the different types of cells present in the gastric pits, I talked about that cellular cells are also present in the gastric pit of stomach and I also talked about the parietal cells, they are also present. Fabular cell and parietal cells, they have receptors for these prostaglandins. They have receptors for these prostaglandins. And when prostaglandin will act on its receptor present on the fabular cell, also called as mucus cell. Mucus cells or fabular cell, when they will act over uh, these cells, it will increase secretion of bicarbonate and it will increase secretion of mucus. We know that bicarbonate is basically used to neutralize the acid, to neutralize the gastric acid. And similarly, mucus, it basically protects the, for example, these are the uh, gastric epithelial cells and we know that uh, mucus is basically present over, it form a layer over these epithelial cells and it protects these epithelial cells from the harmful effect of this acid. Okay, so it means prostaglandin by increasing secretion of bicarbonate and by increasing secretion of mucus, it is basically uh, protecting these epithelial cells from the harmful effect of gastric acid. Play. On the other hand, this prostaglandin will also act on its receptor present on the parietal cells. And when it will act uh, on its receptor present on the parietal cell, it will decrease. It will not increase this time. It will decrease HCL secretion. We know that parietal cells are basically responsible for the uh, secretion of senses and secretion of uh, HCL. Okay. Detail mechanism has been explained in my previous video, how HCL is uh, being synthesized and released from the parietal cell, uh, what type of second messengers are involved, how different substances, gastrin, somatostatin, histamine, acetylcholine can regulate the gastric acid secretion from the parietal cell. All these things have been discussed in the previous video. You can watch my dad video. Okay. Okay. Now, prostaglandin will increase secretion of bicarbonate and mucus that will uh, protect the epithelial cell from harmful effect of acid and it will decrease uh, axial secretion and again it is protecting epithelial cells from the harmful effect okay so this is the reason these prostaglandins are basically very protective they play very protective role for these epithelial cells of uh, stomach clear so now this is the role for the one uh, another very important role that these prostaglandins basically they will increase blood flow they will increase blood flow. And we know that when blood flow toward GIT, toward stomach wall will increase, obviously the process of regeneration and healing of the damaged area will increase. 
Okay, so again they are playing their protective role by increasing the blood flow in the submucosa of GIT. Okay, now let's see how these prostaglandin are formed. How these prostaglandin are formed, and then we will talk about the types of enzyme. Here you can see that this is a phospholipid bilayer membrane. Phospholipid bilayer membrane. This phospholipid bilayer membrane will be converted will be converted into an acetonic acid with the help of very important enzyme phospholipase A and this phospholipase A get activated in response to any injury or damage or inflammation to the cell Okay, when there is any injury or damage to the cell, this phospholipase A will be activated and it will convert this phospholipid bilayer membrane into a retinonic acid. And this retinonic acid, with the help of a group of enzymes, with the help of a group of enzymes, it will be converted into prostaglandin G2. It will be converted into prostaglandin G2 and the group those enzymes are basically called as cyclooxygenase 1 or cyclooxygenase 2. Now what is the difference between cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2? It will be explained in the later part of the video. Stay with me. Now this prostaglandin G2 will be converted into prostaglandin H2. Prostaglandin H2 with the help of another enzyme prostaglandin GH2 synthase prostaglandin GH2 synthase okay with the help of this enzyme this prostaglandin G2 will be converted into prostaglandin H2 now this prostaglandin with H2 depending upon the type of cell it will be converted into different types of prostonide. For example, in the platelets, this prostaglandin H2 will be converted into thromboxin A2. Thromboxin A2. And here, it will be responsible for the vasoconstriction and for the platelet activation and some other activities. Okay. Similarly, this prostaglandin H2 will be converted into prostaglandin D2 in the mast cell and in some cells of the brain this prostaglandin g2 now i am talking about the uh, now talking about git in git and in kidney it will be converted into prostaglandin i2 and prostaglandin e2 now these are our uh, desired prostonide with respect to our today's lecture Prostaglandin I2 and prostaglandin E2, as they are formed in the GIT, I have explained that in different types of cells, this PGH2 will be converted into different prostaglandin. In, in throm uh, platelets, thrombexin A2 will be formed. In mast cell, prostaglandin D2 will be formed. In stomach, prostaglandin I2 and prostaglandin E2 will be formed. And these are the basically E2 and I2 are the prostaglandin that will increase bicarbonate secretion that will increase mucus secretion that will in inhibit HCL secretion and that will increase the blood flow. So these are the basically protective uh, prostonides, protective prostaglandin present in our uh, GI mucosa. GI mucosa. Clear? Getting it? Okay. Now, now let's talk about what is difference between cyclooxygenase 1 and cyclooxygenase 2. The main difference is let's write the differences cox1 cox2 cox1 are basically constitutive constitutive it means they are present under the normal physiological condition they are present under normal they are formed under normal physiological conditions while cox2 they are basically inducible 
inducible it mean they will be activated under certain conditions they will be activated under certain condition they will be formed under certain condition and one of those condition is inflammation cancer as well okay point number 1 they are constitutive so it mean they will be formed under normal physiological condition cox2 inducible they will be formed uh, under specific condition for example uh, inflammation look types uh, types of cells they are present in normal gn mucosa they are present in platelets they are present in renal tubular cells but cox2 enzyme they are present in inflammatory cells they are present in macrophages they are present in fibroblast they are present in lymphocytes okay so it mean these enzyme they get activated in case of inflammation and they are present mostly in the inflammatory cells okay and their production and synthesis will be induced by certain cytokines certain inflammatory cytokines getting it okay it means as this cox2 enzyme is basically present at the site of inflammation and this cox2 enzyme is basically responsible for causing for causing pain for causing fever for causing swelling okay so this is basically cox2 enzyme so by taking nsaids anti inflammatory drugs we actually want to block this cox2 enzyme that has been induced uh, in case of inflammation and we want to block this enzyme so that pain fever and swelling can be reduced okay we do not want to block this cox1 enzyme but what happened mostly nsaids they are basically non selective they are basically non selective they will block cox1 as well along with the cox2 that was our desire this was our desired enzyme to block but most of the drug will block cox1 as well and we know that when in the stomach cox1 enzyme will be blocked it mean the production and synthesis of prostaglandin i2 and prostaglandin e2 will be inhibited it will be decreased okay and when the production of or synthesis of prostaglandin uh, e2 and i2 will be decreased now they will no more be uh, able to act in enough amount on these receptor on the fibular cell it means the synthesis of bicarbonate will be decreased synthesis of mucus will be decreased so they are protect against the gastric ulcer uh, gastric acid will be decreased furthermore uh, you know that prostaglandin by was basically inhibiting that cell secretion they was basically inhibiting and when prostaglandin is not being formed because of blockage of this cox1 cox1 enzyme when this prostaglandin will not be formed what will happen prostaglandin mediated inhibition of hcl it will be reduced and now hcl secretion will increase relatively relatively it will increase okay and it will again uh, cause a damage to the epithelial cells uh, protective mechanism has been reduced hcl secretion has been increased so what will happen it may lead toward the uh, ulcer furthermore we know that prostaglandin basically also cause increased blood flow for the regeneration mechanism and when there will be no prostaglandin because cox1 has been blind blocked these prostaglandin are not being formed and it mean prostaglandin induced blood flow will also uh, reduce so what will happen the process of regeneration and healing will also decrease so all these things may ultimately lead toward the uh, gastric ulcer just by blocking this cox1 enzyme as well we actually want to block this cox2 but obviously because of the non selective nature of most of the prostaglandin uh, sorry no most of the nsaid drug this cox1 will also be blocked and it may lead to the ulcer because of these phenomena as i have explained okay now how can we protect there are two basic points point number 1 by giving cox2 selective inhibitor selective cox2 inhibitor there are certain drugs which include silicoxid silicoxid this is a drug it will only block cox2 enzyme 
it will not block cox1 enzyme it will not block cox1 enzyme and when cox1 enzyme will not be blocked obviously the amount of production of prostaglandin i2 and prostaglandin d2 will not decrease and their protective effect will not decrease and they will keep on working normally so uh, by blocking cox2 enzyme we can reduce we can reduce the risk of uh, developing gastric ulcer okay but we have to be very conscious while giving these drugs to the cvs patients because they may cause the cvs related side effect uh, to those patient clear point number 2 is by co administration of proton pump inhibitor proton pump inhibitor we know that uh, proton pump is basically hydrogen potassium pump that is responsible for the secretion of acid from the parietal cell and when this pump will be blocked by giving certain drugs proton pump inhibitors like meprazole acemeprazole pentaprazole when this pump will be inhibited this pump will be blocked acid secretion will decrease acid secretion will decrease so in this way we can also uh, stay safe from developing peptic ulcer disease okay so uh, <clears throat> detail mechanism of how this proton pump work how uh, acid is synthesized and released from the parietal cell how this acid is regulated by different substances like gastrin histamine somatostatin acetylcholine and what are the second messengers involved in acid secre secretion has also been discussed in my previous video if you want to learn more about this topic you can watch my that video okay uh, well it was all about the uh, acid induced uh, gastric ulcer i hope you like my video Uh, please don't forget to subscribe my channel and uh, press the bell icon uh, so that you may get notification for the future video in the next video we will talk about the uh, different drugs used for the gastric ulcer disease thank you so much